one of the other ones that is sort of uh, is sort of humorous I, from Central Asia. There's a tradition of these um, guys singing with their throat that can make more than one note with their voice. <laughs> singer in the sample collection and then if we harmonize him we'll get So it's a long way from the band room, uh, where I started off playing in, in uh, elementary school with my alto saxophone. Um, let's see, other basic kinds of information that people usually want to know about this stuff is the cost of the instrument. Uh, a lot of people are interested in that. If they, yeah, This costs about the same as a professional saxophone. Um, it's, it's handmade, it's put together. It by the guy who invented them in Switzerland. Um, so it, it varies a little bit depending on what the dollar's worth compared to the Swiss currency, but around it's around $3,000 for a, uh, a synthophone. And the um, synthophone is a software-driven instrument. So this is the same instrument that I've had for years and years, but the inside the bell is a um, computer on a strip, and at the end of that strip is a little plug called an EEPROM and you can exchange your EEPROM as new features have come out over time. Instead of getting a new instrument, I just change that little chip on the end of the board, fire it up and get a new set of uh, features. S some of the stuff that's been changed in the most recent past is making the pitch bend smoother and giving you a, um, a pitch bend that falls off rather than always going up. Something you can use for like trombone type effects. Um, that's your normal pitch band. If we go to this, the bell, the, the thing, that's um, something that's new, it was put on, um, trigger it with my thumb on the, on the back of the sax, so when I play the note, just very gently strike this and it makes this uh, note fall down. And so you can use that for um, expressive kinds of phrasing. That's a um, recent feature, wasn't on the chip in the beginning. And the different um, degrees of pitch bending, that's bending on both sides of the pitch more or less the same. If I want to get rid of the pitch bending, I can take it off so that it doesn't bend. sort of a, a completely electronic sound. And then there's one way you can make it um, stay perfectly in tune when you release your jaw so that you, if you don't hold it very tight, it's completely in tune. And then when you lean on it, it'll bend up sharp so it can increase the sharpness. But when I open it, it is in tune. It stays where it was. And then you can set it, say, four degrees sharp. 
one degree flat, a little bit of a scoop under the note from below. And that makes the instrument real playable. It, you can set it you know, just how it should work for a certain sound. And once you've got that together, you can use combinations of keys on the instrument to memorize that, all those settings in one location and call them back with one change of key. Um, those overall settings are called master patches and you can store 32 of them on the instrument. So if I was playing a concert, I can plan in advance, have the instrument set for strings with harmony, um, then goes to a percussion, then goes to a flute, then goes to a tuba, and all of those are in different octaves. Some of them have harmony, some don't have harmony. And um, you can just click through them one after the other without having to do a lot of changes when you're on stage. So that's a uh, nice feature of the synthophone. Uh, so saxophone-wise, it's a, a normal sax, but it's got a lot of extra fingerings that are mean stuff to the computer. That's the learning curve of this instrument. If you trying to learn it, you wouldn't have any trouble playing basic scales and stuff on it, but you would take a while to learn these odd fingerings that make the computer do different things that you have in mind. Um, there's a users group online, um, people scattered throughout the world that are playing the synthophone. Um, there's videos, different kinds of um, uh, YouTube kinds of situations there, a lot of uh, demos of, of shows that we've done here at Berkeley or at other places with the instrument in action. It's like a, a small community of users, but they're pretty busy in, in actively doing stuff. Um, what questions, if any, do you have about the instrument that I haven't touched on or just anything that happens to come to mind? Uh-huh, yeah, you could certainly do that. Um, I think probably the best way to do a uh, traditional wah would be to get a pedal and plug the audio from a system into it. And I used to have one that I um, sold, but get one where you can click the wah on and off. Uh, I had a power, it was a volume pedal when it was set one way and it became a, um, a wah pedal when it was set the other, you just had to click on it on a button on the foot switch and it would go to one function or the other. And uh, that kind of thing, um, you know, of course, adds a lot of edge to the sound, so it could be cool. I have a wah patch here. Let's see, oh, here it is. This one is where the sound is sort of built into the... It's pretty soon. It's, it would really take over. Yeah. When I was your age, or slightly old, I started putting um, delay playing my sax, my regular saxophone through uh, delay. Um, there was a device made a long time ago that was, um, you had to have a whole board in the, the neck of the sax and a m contact mic clipped onto it and it doubled your sound down an octave and then an octave below that. It's called an octave divider. And I played with those for a while on pedals, um, flangers, and I was, you know, playing flutes and um, clarinet and saxophone with these sorts of things on it. And then this sort of technology came along and uh, sort of took over from there. Um, I don't have it hooked up with this particular computer, but I also use the output from the synthophone to um, feed signals into um, Sibelius, the notation package. So I, when I get an idea, I can play it on the saxophone and it appears as notation in the, in the software. Um, so 
there's a lot of different ways you can use it. And a uh, number of people are interested in this sort of thing so that they can practice late at night with headphones and, uh, you know, don't have to, no one can hear what they're doing. <laughs> Yeah, any, if you have any other questions, far away. Otherwise, we'll close it up. Yeah, all right, well, it's called a synthophone. It's just like a sax, but it's a syntho uh, made in Switzerland. And if you're um, curious, you can um, check, do a Google search, and there's a, a bunch of stuff will pop up. Um, have recordings, uh, pictures, uh, video clips from shows that were done, and, and so on. It's one of uh, several different instruments in the same vein that are out there. It's a WX series by Yamaha. There's a uh, the EWI, the, the woodwind instrument um, made by Akai. And um, from time to time, we hear about um, one of a kind specialized wind controllers that different people have made for themselves. And uh, if you're interested in this sort of thing, uh, just keep your eye peeled. It'll, different kinds of things will, will pop up. But the, uh, the synthophone's a great instrument, and it takes advantage of your previous knowledge of the saxophone. It's, it's, it's sort of its main reason for life. So that's it for today's clinic. We had one curious customer, but um, we hope anybody that uh, may see the video later will get some questions. And if you, uh, if you wanted to contact me, I'm Randy Feltz. I'm here at Berklee College of Music. Um, rfelts at berkeley.edu or you can just do a, uh, a Google search for the synthophone on the web. <laughs>